Okay, where to begin my story? My story with racing begins when I was really young. I was always into racing. My dad helped out on cars, but mainly growing up, we were just fans. He stopped working on cars before I was born, and we just kind of hung out and went to racing as a family, and and uh, that lasted. I was only a fan up until about 17 years old when I started helping a friend of mine with his race car. And I was really interested in chassis work and how all the stuff was put together and worked right from the beginning. I mean, I remember the first year um, I was really into learning about sprint car and what we called modified um, suspension. It was a torsion bar suspension at the time, and it really fascinated me. And then uh, that lasted for quite a while, helped uh, my friend out for quite a while. And then I got into helping other people and dabbled with some sprint car stuff and went a little bit with some midget stuff and uh, just kept it as a hobby. And then my girlfriend at the time, now my wife's dad raced and he raced late models. So I got into late model racing because the sprint car stuff, it just got boring for me. It got to the point where it was all motor and what it seemed like is very little suspension work. It was, if you bolt a, a pretty decent wing on there, you get it to handle a little bit and you just pour all your money into motors. Late models at the time, this was the mid to late 90s and the four bar suspension was coming around. You still had monoliefs, you still had a bunch of different stuff going on. Swing arm stuff was big. Um, and I really got fascinated because these dirt cars, they could get to go pretty good in very slick conditions just with creating and being a creative person and think about chassis dynamics and how it all works. So I got into late model racing, helping uh, my girlfriend's dad and then my, my girlfriend's brother, now my brother-in-law, and worked for them and then went and helped some other people. And I helped a guy who always wanted to go professional racing. And he said, if I ever go, I'm taking you with me. And then after about a year or so, I stopped helping him. But in uh, 2002, I got a call from him. And he was partnering up with a guy here in Wisconsin named Russ Scheffler. And uh, Russ was the hot shoe in our area. He won more races than anybody. He had, had some money. He had other businesses going on. So he had some money, and my friend gave me a call and said, Do you want to? Russ wants to go and build race cars. Do you want to come along? Do you want to be a part of this thing? So it was like a dream job. I mean, how many people get an offer like this to get paid full time? I didn't have to contribute any of my money, all I had to do was just go work for him. I was building cranes and cement mixers at the time, so I was a fabricator, a mechanic by trade. I worked on other people's race cars. I knew stuff pretty good. By that time, my ideas about chassis had developed along, and I learned quite a bit. Um, so I went to work for them in 2002. About a year, a little better than a year after that, the guy who invited me in left. They broke apart the partnership, and I ended up staying on with Russ and working in his shop and building his race cars, and then ultimately 
becoming his crew guy and it was just in the beginning it was me and another guy and the other guy drove the hauler and did the tires and I basically took care of everything else um, did that for a number of years built cars um, for a number of years for those guys at one point our car building part of it got big enough where we had in our local tracks we didn't get outside of our local area hardly at all but our local tracks we had 50 percent of the field and um, that lasted a while and we did pretty good locally back in 2000 I think six I five six somewhere through there I had an opportunity to go to a chassis school that was taught by a Formula One engineer. And um, it wasn't like a dirt track chassis school. It was all theoretical chassis dynamics and how, um, I mean, these are Formula One people. The class that I was in had people from Penske's NASCAR team had two Chip Ganassi's engineers in there, had a bunch of road racing people from different road race cars. It was a fairly in-depth class, but it was all, it wasn't a move you this bar and do this and do that, and this is how it works. It was a lot of math and a lot of theoretical stuff and how tires actually work and how vehicle dynamics actually work and I love that class. I got more out of class than anything else I had been to. I had been up to that point to the race-wise school and the, the rocket stuff and then I, um, I think I went to one or two masters built schools <clears throat> but by far the best school I had ever been to was this one taught by a Belgian Formula One engineer and he talked in broken English and when he got talking real fast it would get kind of interesting to listen but he was sharp and he was fun and uh, learned a ton over I think it was a four day seminar. Um, so that carried me and got me more interested in the chassis dynamics and gave me a really solid foundation. And then after that, I started write, reading all these engineering, automotive engineering books and getting into that avenue of it as deep as I could. I really dug in. And I started crossing stuff over what applies to this type of racing, will, will this work in late models? Why do late models think differently than other types of racing? And I really started to find that there are a lot of similarities. It's just that late models do things different. Um, not because the dynamics are different, it's because the cars are too loose or too tight, so you got to think about them a little bit different. But all the dynamics are the same. An Indy car is the same as a Formula One car, is a NASCAR. The dynamics that they operate on are the same. You just got to concentrate at the core of what is going on with that particular car. And I think that's what that chassis school, that engineering school gave me. It was the idea, not only the concepts, but to think to the core of what is going on there. But then uh, one night, I got a call from Russ, and he's like, uh, can you come down to the shop? Um, we're going to put a car together for Dan Schlieper. And Dan, if anybody's been around for a while, knows back in uh, the 2000s, Dan was a hot shoe. Dan was one of the original Dirty Dozen World of Outlaw guys. He had won the World 100 at that point. He was one of the better guys in the country. So we were going to build a car for Dan Schlieper. 
and uh, worked that winter, built uh, the Scheffler cars and got those ready, and then we built the car for Dan, and um, we, this was about, I believe, 2007, 2008, maybe spring of 2008 or so, um, and we took that car to Florida, and uh, Dan made some features with it. It took us a little bit. The opening night out, he finished third at Brunswick, and then we struggled a little bit, and uh, then we came back at Volusia, and he ran real well. He ran top tens, I believe, and uh, made a bunch of the features down there. And this was basically at the before this, we were making all um, swing arm cars. So this was kind of it was right when it this was a swing arm car but we really started getting into the four bar idea and uh built that swing arm car for dan and he ended up racing it for about a year that particular car and in about the fall of 2008 I started my blog, Hogan Technologies, and my blog was basically named after my dog. My dog, his name was Hogan, and technologies just seemed the right fit. So I was dabbling with my blog on the side. Dan was our swing arm driver. Then we started getting more into the four bar stuff and started developing a four bar car. The blog was going good. We got uh, I got a lot of good feedback for it, and uh, I was blogging a lot, and I just felt the need at that point to write a book. And I had it. Uh, I was writing it on the side at night. I was blogging. I was building race cars during the day, going racing, learning all I could. So now we move ahead. Dan was driving, and then he got out of our stuff. He went uh, a different avenue. And um, what we ended up doing is we ended up building more cars locally, got our four-bar stuff pretty tuned in to our local tracks. A lot of guys were buying them. A lot of guys loved them. We got a lot of guys where we could take them, and they were struggling in another car and we could put them in one of our cars and we could work with them and teach them a little bit of stuff and they'd end up being a top three car winning features and this happened more than once it wasn't just a fluke guy or anything so that really got me more interested in my blog and really putting my ideas out there the book was coming along but it was kind of like just sitting on my hard drive. It was almost done. I had been writing it for a couple of years, and rethinking some of the concepts, and what is the absolute most important thing about racing, and what are the three biggest things? I have three big things that I think all dirt late models and all race cars basically revolve around. Everything else is just an offshoot of that, but there are three different, three big concepts to that. So I got this book done, and it was actually a Friday night, and I got so determined that I said, Sunday night, I'm going to get this thing up on the internet for sale, whatever it took. And I stayed up late nights, and I put it together, and it wasn't, the first draft wasn't pretty, but it was out there. And it since then has been cleaned up and edited, and we, we did a lot of stuff to that original book. But it's up on the internet at Amazon right now for sale. And then I wrote a couple more books. I have, uh, I have a, a book where I just went through and dumped everything I could think of um, 
all the struggles that we went through as a team and stuff and put it in this book so that hopefully other people could read it and not go through those same struggles. Um, I hate pe I hate it when people um, struggle with things when I already have the solution. That's how I got into helping people. That's why I got the blog going. Because I wanted to save people the headaches that other racers go through and I, we went through you know putting cars together and stuff like that so that's the reason behind everything that I do is just to save the people break down the complicated chassis talk into something that anybody can relate to anybody can think of and just make it easy for people there are far too many racers out there that like making themselves very smart sounding and talk about things in very complicated language when all this stuff is is really simple if you just cut to the core of things and you can explain it well enough so people can understand it it's actually really simple stuff so fast forward to today and why I'm making the video here for the blog is um, I left the chassis building business. Russ has passed away and they closed it all down. And um, now I'm working as a professional writer writing technology stuff. Um, a tech writer um, for a major corporation. And I'm still doing the blogging. Now I'm getting into videos. And it seems like racers love watching videos. So the next easiest thing for me to do to help people out is to make videos, put them up on YouTube, and make it easier for people to learn and watch and get more people in on this stuff so they don't struggle. And um, that's why I'm doing videos. That's why it's it's a good it's a good avenue to take Hogan Technologies to that next level. So if you like the content on the site and you want to see more of it, subscribe to the channel below. Uh, you can ring the bell and every time I put up a video talking about racing or technology or anything to do with racing at Hogan Technologies, you'll get a notification on it. And the notification will just be through um, YouTube. It's not going to be like we're going to send you an email or anything like that. It'll just be a little YouTube flag and real simple, but it'll let you know that there's more content there, um, brand new stuff to look at. And my early videos, I understand, aren't going to be as good, but I'm going to keep working at them and hopefully everybody will get a lot out of them. That's my point. So thanks and check out my videos.